Since this YouTube thing is so full of people making videos about stupid theories, I figured why not? I'm sure that I can come up with a theory that can out-stupid even the stupidest of the stupid. And guess what? I did. One Punch Man is not real. It's a figment of Saitama's imagination. It's a dream. Saitama is in a coma. And as dumb as that sounds, bear with me. Watch the whole video because somehow this actually does make a lot of sense. Now, I have to have proof though, right? No, I guess I guess you're right. I probably don't I probably don't need proof because apparently, based on what I've learned watching stupid theory videos on other big channels, it's totally acceptable to just make things up and take things out of context, but in order to, to preserve my dignity, there's a line that I'm not willing to cross, and that's it. This is going to be based on facts from the series. It makes perfect sense, and it's absolutely retarded at the exact same time, but who cares? So, here it is. Well, actually, but first, uh, look down below the video. Just look. Do you see the red thing that says subscribe? Go, go click on that real quick. And while you're at it, click on the little bell thing next to it, and the thumb thing as well. Thanks. So how do I prove that One Punch Man is not real? That none of it ever happened? That Saitama is, in fact, in a coma? Well, like this. First off, he encountered Crablante, and he tried to protect the kid with the nutsack for a chin from Crablante before Crablante hit him really hard. Really, really hard. And sent him flying into a garage. That is a blow that a person does not just walk off. He would have got injured. Now, if you consider both blows, him getting hit and him getting the garage, he would have not gotten back up and he would have got injured and he did get injured actually. He just does not realize it yet because after the blow he was brought to the hospital and he is now in a coma. Everything that's happened since he hit that garage is just a dream. As kids we all wanted to be superheroes and then we became adults and we had to do the whole adult thing and set those childish desires aside. But that does not mean that they no longer exist. It's possible that they were just suppressed somewhere in our subconscious. Our subconscious has a lot to do with what we dream about, a lot of influence on our dreams. And in a dream, logic is not something that has to exist. The only place that we can truly be whatever we want to be, with no restrictions, is our own imaginations. When Saitama was a kid, he says that he wanted to be a hero that could defeat bad guys in a single punch. And before long, with almost no effort, that is what he became. Now, this is his childhood desire manifesting itself in the only place that it really can, in his imagination. Now, I will admit, though, that in his world, it's very possible for a human to become a hero. So the fact that he became a hero is not the problem. The problem is that he randomly managed to become exactly what he wanted to be with almost no effort. That is the problem. All right. The pre-One Punch Man Saitama did not seem to be the most motivated person in the world. It's safe to assume that he's not the most active person, uh, and not the kind of person that would really spend a whole lot of time working out. It's likely that he really would not know what it would take, what it would require to become that strong. But like I said a minute ago, in a dream, logic is not required. His brain was like, alright, you know what? You're strong. I have no idea how you became that strong, so to hell with it. Let's just say that you did some push-ups and some shit-ups and some squats and did a little bit of running, and that, that's good enough. That is a good enough explanation for now. Which is ridiculous, though, and even he would understand that, though, but it's his dreams and it's his rules. In 2013, a former Israeli prime minister had a stroke and he went into a coma. Now, they wanted to see how his brain would react to various external stimuli, and in one of his tests, they opened his eyes up and they showed him a picture of his family. Now, with a thing called a functional MRI, doctors are able to check a brain's activity by watching the blood flow through certain areas of the brain. When he was shown the picture of his family, despite the fact that he was in a coma, there was a significant amount of increased brain activity. And this is just one of many experiments that proves that it's possible for a person's mind to be at least somewhat aware or influenced by what's happening around them in the real world and these things can leak into a person's subconscious and they can manifest in a person's dreams. While Saitama was training, for some stupid reason he lost all of his hair. Now when a person sustains a severe brain injury, it's 
not uncommon for it to require brain surgery. And before a doctor can perform brain surgery, there's one thing that they must do first. They need to shave the person's head. So this happened. Subconsciously, he was aware of it, and as a result, he became bald. When he first met Kreblante, he was in a suit. Kreblante asked him if he was a businessman, and he said no. He also said that he did not care about anything. Later, though, later, after getting hit, when he was telling Kreblante that he wanted to be a hero um, that could defeat bad guys in a single punch, he also said that he did not want to be a businessman. And when he said that, though, he was undoing his tie. Ooh, symbolic, right? No. <laughs> He wanted to be a businessman because he has to do something as an adult, but he keeps being rejected, so he's suppressing that. In the real world, he gets rejected a lot. Now, now in Imagination Land, though, Saitama goes around being a hero, dressed as a hero, but he does not claim to be a hero. He says that he is just a guy who's a hero for fun, giving the appearance that he does not take it seriously, and that he really does not even care, but he does care. He cares in the real world, and he's just used to being rejected. He cares in his imaginations as well, which is obvious when you see his reaction to his huge jump in the rankings after destroying the meteor. Now, in the real world though, he's so used to being overlooked and rejected that he can't even escape that in his imagination. Which is why when he went out in the city after the meteor, everybody was screaming at him, mad at him. He saved them, but they were still pissed off at him. He's being rejected for his actions in his imagination again. Everybody just ganged up on him. And to which, though, he eventually lashed out in anger at everybody, which is something that he probably wants to do in the real world, but he just can't. So there you have it. Saitama is in a coma. He's unconscious. None of it's real. He's just laying in a hospital bed somewhere. <laughs> oh my god, that's a stupid theory. Anyways, uh, if you watch this far, I'm sorry. Uh, go ahead though and don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and comment, and I'll see you guys next time.